The climate crisis, a topic that we hear so much about, but there's a problem being silenced. In 2020, Global Witness recorded a record-breaking 227 people have been murdered for speaking out to protect their land and our ecosystems. Police have launched investigations into the murder of environmentalist Joanna Stachbury. Many of them linked to resource exploitation, such as logging and mining. I'm here to find out why. It's no secret that climate change is happening. Each year, we receive new staggering figures of the damage we're inflicting on our planet. Since 1990, the world has lost 170 million hectares of forest, an area the size of Libya. But what about the people living in these local communities? I wanted to find out more about the situations that these landowners and activists faced. To explain this to me, I spoke to Laura from Global Witness. She works on the case studies inside these communities. So land and environmental defenders is a fairly broad category, uh, but it typically includes everyone who is uh, taking a peaceful stand uh, to defend the right to healthy water, to healthy forests, to um, access to land that belongs to communities. Um, you know, it's anyone and everyone who is trying to do uh, work that actually belongs to all of us, which is essentially keeping our, our planet healthy. What typically happens is that um, many of these people trying to defend the, the land and, um, and natural resources uh, will le live in communities where um, development projects might be taking place or about to take place. Um, they're rarely consulted on these projects, so they see the very negative impact they have and um, don't have a say about what's happening in their lands. So in trying to protect their own resources and land and, and fundamental rights, they are attacked. Located in the valley of Baha Aywan, these rivers and the people who depend on them were endangered when the state allowed mining exploration in the national park. Nuestra lucha empezó desde que nos dañaron este río. Siete meses de sedimentación que no podíamos ocupar esta agua ni para cepillarnos, mucho menos los animales que tenemos en casa podían hacer uso de esta agua. Esa protesta trajo pues la criminalización. No lograron comprar a toda la gente con dinero, con mentiras, con ofertas. Y luego vino la protesta y la criminalización. Han construido la imagen de muchas compañeras y de compañeros en este municipio, en estas comunidades en particular. La pregunta era que qué pasaba. ¿Qué le pasaba a este río? Que era un color chocolate, le decíamos nosotros, puro sedimento, puro lodillo. The people have organized and protested against, but have found themselves criminalized. Imagen de personas vinculadas a estructuras criminales, personas asesinas, así nos dibujan. Pues me identifico como una defensora del medio ambiente, defensora del territorio, porque desde el momento que defendemos este hermoso recurso natural como es el agua, para nosotros es defender nuestra vida. See, we talk about the climate crisis, um, and obviously a lot of people think of it as an environmental problem, but ultimately it is a human crisis as well. If people are dying because of their freedom to have their, their speech and put across their opinion and try and protect the planet, who would possibly be behind such, um, you know, cruel, a lot of them are really cruel killings, um, to kill these people that are just trying to protect the planet? There's many uh, business interests behind um, specific development, specific projects in, in regions where defenders live. Let's take a look at the different sectors that are partial to these murders. Logging. It involves cutting trees for sale as timber or pulp. The timber is usually used for building materials, with the pulp being used for paper products. And you've also got mining and extractions. 
Exploration is a range of activities to help determine if there are minerals underground. And so what we have typically seen happen is that uh, projects will go ahead without any type of consultation. Um, so people who live in those areas will see their forests destroyed, their waters polluted, their lands taken away from them. And um, it is in, in trying to defend the right to um, retaining what's already theirs and protecting it for everyone's sake that they're, they're attacked. And now, obviously, it's often very difficult to um, have certainty about who commits the murders. In fact, um, it's much easier to find out um, who who pulls the trigger. Uh, but the person who holds the gun doesn't necessarily mean, uh, isn't necessarily the person who is behind uh, the murder itself. My mom would receive anonymous calls, um, uh, like from unknown numbers, and people would tell her that her day is coming. My mom was murdered on the 22nd of October in 2020. If I was home, I would have tried to do something, and then my son would have lost both my mother and I on that very same day. Before the man talks were surrounding the community, we were um, a united community. We, we were happy, we were free to walk wherever you wanted to walk. You could be friends with anyone that you wanted to be friends with. It was a nice united community before. It has changed drastically because since the mining was here, even the community was split into so many parts. We are not the same as we are living before the man arrived here. You see the, how, how the wind is blowing. What if there's a mine here? How am I going to survive with my children? communities should expose such things and should be able to talk to each other about such things. <laughs> Educating our people enough about the environment, about their health, about the, the mining industry is important. Before you sign on that, on, on that and that paper on that contract that you are willing to leave your land or that you are willing to relocate. Hey, um, my mom, Nandi, man. I'm Nandi, and the way I'm Nandi, I'm Mam Janga say, Google boys took tears. It's cool, man. I've been you figure up a cool in your corner. What should we do? Ube, my papa, a sugar If she says something, she won't gonna be changed. She will stand for it. 
and focus on it and fight for it. After my mom's murder, community members are mostly scared. We are afraid to even ask questions at a meeting about electricity, at a meeting about water, at a meeting about schools, because you don't know what might cause you to be a target. I don't believe that my mom's murder should cause us to be silent. I don't think her legacy what will live on if we live like that. I think she wouldn't have wanted us to just give up. So whatever that I can do to, to assist, especially the youth of my community, I think I, I'm going to give it my 100%. But I am going to take on a fight. If I was to move, I was going to move right away after her murder, but I chose to stay because I want to see how this whole thing works out and how much information can I gather in order to save my community. Are these large companies that perhaps say in Europe and everything we might see and possibly deal with indirectly? Whether whether we're talking about a global company, a corporation, or whether we're talking about local um, company, those are all part of a larger sort of supply chain. So even if we're talking about, say, for instance, a um, small scale, a small mining project that's run by a local um, company of a, any given country, uh, that. Uh, mine will probably be selling its um, its uh, product to um, other people further down the supply chain. It was becoming apparent to me how difficult this fight really is. In the north and central parts of the country, across 40% of the national territory we have, the worst drought registered in Mexico in the past 70 years. The government estimates that nearly 2.5 million people now lack secure food and water supplies. Oscar Ayod Adams knew all too much about the drought problem in Mexico. He realized how severe the drought was when he tried to sow and the water shortages meant he couldn't harvest his crops. There's not much we can do without water, he once said to his mother. He was one of these people who, who were really uncomfortable to those who wanted to pursue those business interests. Oscar began to campaign to the authorities to protect what little water they had from the large companies coming in. He was killed as a result of trying to uh, protest. Oscar was 34 when he was murdered. He was brutally killed on the 24th of September, 2020.
there's a reason why our latest report has the title, you know, the, the last line of defense. These are people who are so exposed and um, who risk their lives just to protect uh, natural resources. Now, any government of any given country has the responsibility to protect their citizens. And by definition, uh, land and environmental defenders are particularly vulnerable um, citizens. So they, uh, governments are obliged uh, to put in place measures to ensure that these people are not uh, seeing their, their lives risked on a daily basis. It seems the motive is money, but other governments turning a blind eye because they've got the key interests within these companies. It, this ain't for me. My standards are higher. Yeah, but are. that's fair enough, it's good. What? Therefore I said we have to be very frank, so... Uh, right, yeah. yeah. That's that, that, not interesting. Do you, have, do you know anybody who would be able I to do so? I don't think so, and I wouldn't recommend it either. Yeah, yeah. Because those persons would be insulted. This is Ramon's story. The threats were almost constant, because they always said that they were going to kill, that they were going to displace. They were assassinated in 2017. Le pegaron como 13 tiros en todo el cuerpo y quedó ahí tirado. Los que lo asesinaron a él eran unos paramilitares, patrocinados por empresarios. Mi nombre es Ramón Bedoya Peñata, hijo de Hernán Bedoya, que fue asesinado ahora en el 8 de diciembre. Trabajamos aquí en la finca porque somos campesinos de acá, de esos territorios. Cuando entraron los, los grupos paramilitares con, la, con las guerrillas, el ejército, entonces ya desplazaron mucha gente de aquí, todo el mundo se fue yendo. Ya cuando en el 2001 o 2002, cuando ya regresó otra vez la gente, ya se encontró ya con el cultivo de palma ya dentro de sus tierras. Esas son las palmas que son de los empresarios. Entonces por eso la, por eso no quieren que no quieren entregarnos el territorio a nosotros ya porque como es un territorio tan rico pero aquí como se ve esa es una cabeza de corozo aquí ya ese es el corozo pero el gobierno lo está haciendo muy lento porque al gobierno le convienen son los empresarios. Entonces, como uno, como uno es campesino, todo lo que uno quiere es su territorio que le han quitado tras la violencia. A partir de que mataron a mi papá, también siguieron las amenazas para nosotros. Entonces al matar a mi papá ellos pensaron que nosotros nos íbamos a ir de acá del territorio. Y no, cuando mataron a mi papá nosotros volvimos otra vez al territorio, estamos viviendo en el territorio. Y esa amenaza es bien constante. Se siente uno mal porque siente que corre riesgo la vida de uno y la de la familia también. Bueno, Mike, ¿cómo se siente usted referente a lo que yo estoy haciendo, llevando los mismos pasos que lleva mi papá? Yo he pensado yo mismo, yo me siento muy preocupada, porque a mí me da miedo. Yo que de pronto usted me le vaya a hacer algo como lo hicieron con su papá. Lo que nosotros le pedimos al Estado también más que todo es que nos devuelvan el territorio. En cambio que nosotros con nuestra tierra de vuelta ya no van a haber más amenazas, ya no vamos a tener nada y vamos a poder vivir dentro de nuestro territorio.
that's obviously not happening um, enough given given the the results of our, our research and and you know the the, um, the figures that we've been talking about uh, but there are um, there are things that governments individually and then also at a more global level could be done for instance at the moment we have been um, following the development of due diligence legislation in the EU. Now, this could potentially oblige uh, companies to um, to comply with certain um, parameters when they're, when they're, for instance, developing a project in a third country. And so that, that kind of legislation at a global level that co covers sort of um, um, the, the responsibilities that um, companies need to to have and need to be uh, sort of made accountable for is really, really essential. In Latin America, for instance, uh, there's the Escazú Agreement, which has been uh, now ratified by a significant number of um, Latin American countries. And what that does include is um, language around uh, the defense of uh, environmental defenders. So all of those pieces of legislation and uh, you know all the all the protection governments can grant to defenders they really should and they sadly they aren't yet. El día 5 de de abril, pues mi esposo fue asesinado. Y bueno, fue un asesinato muy exagerado porque lo mataron a puñaladas. Sí creemos que los actores en, este son principalmente los empresarios juntamente con los mineros que le dieron muerte a los indígenas. Y eso lo sentimos seguro porque lo hicieron públicamente cuando vinieron a asesinar a nuestros indígenas. A veces callamos las cosas, pero yo pienso de que no debemos de ser así callar. Pero yo creo que el mismo miedo es que nos hace que las cosas las callemos. Y, y una, en mi caso yo como no callo las cosas, Entonces, por eso, cada rato me amenazan, dicen que me van a ir a sacar a la casa y que, que si yo no, no, no dejo de andar en reuniones, que de repente voy a aparecer ahí muerta y que... Y miren, a veces la familia mía me dicen que no ande saliendo porque es peligroso, ¿verdad? Ellos oyen muchos rumores de mí. Y entonces, yo les digo de que a mí no me van a callar porque yo Estoy defendiendo a un pueblo, un pueblo a veces que no habla. The other question I have is, as citizens, say like myself, who doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the government, but feels very passionately about these people and how much protection they really should be having, what can we do to help, you know, as, as stand people, people might be at home watching, how can they help this situation? Uh, ask questions when in our daily lives, when we're buying products, when we are talking to um, to other people, we can we can interrogate others about supply chains. Where are the products that we consume on a daily basis coming from, and what are the companies behind uh, those products doing to ensure that whatever that is, you know, whatever kind of product, whether it's food or clothing or or you know any any other resource. Um, what are companies doing to ensure that those are obtained in a way that is not harming the, the environment, but also that is respectful of, respectful of uh, people's uh, rights and lives? <laughs>
the last decade has underscored the point made in the UNGPs. Voluntary approaches alone are not enough. The rise of mandatory measures will undoubtedly accelerate both uptake and progress. Defenders are our last line of defence against climate breakdown. And we can take heart from the fact that even after decades of violence, people continue to stand up for their land, for our planet. In every story of defiance against corporate theft and land grabbing, against deadly pollution and against environmental disaster, is hope that we can turn the tide on this crisis and learn to live in harmony with the natural world. Until we do, the violence will continue. Thank you.